Hi mathematicians, welcome to this video uh, on equivalent ratios. Now we've learned what the meaning of a ratio is, we've learned what, uh, how to model ratios using tape diagrams, we've also learned how to find equivalent ratios using tape diagrams. In this case, I'm now going to, going to define for you what an equivalent ratio actually is. So our topic is about equivalent ratios. And we know a ratio is a, an ordered number pair uh, of non-negative numbers that describes the relationship between two quantities and order is important. And so when we talk about equivalent ratios, we're going to find out how we, can, how we can make ratios that have the same um, for every this, there are this um, relationship. All right, so it says ratios. We already know what they are. I just defined them are equivalent, ratios are equivalent if, and this is only when they are equivalent, if there is a positive number, that means any number that's to the right of zero, that can be multiplied, that can be multiplied by both quantities in one ratio, so this would one ratio would be, for example, 5 to 8, to equal the corresponding quantities, corresponding quantities in the second ratio. So what does this mean? It means if this is a ratio, right here, if the ratio is A to B, and this is another ratio, C to D, So it's saying A to B, or this ratio right here, is equivalent to this ratio right here if there is a positive number that can multiply both quantities in the first ratio by to equal the corresponding quantities in the second ratio. So for example, if I could find the same number to multiply this quantity and this quantity, if these are the same number right here, the same constant number, lowercase c, the same constant number to equal this quantity right here, then I have equivalent ratios. So it says if I could take the first, both quantities in the first ratio, in one ratio, and if I could multiply them by, by a number, by a positive number, that's the same number here, to equal the corresponding quantities in the second ratio, then both of these ratios are equivalent. So for example, let's put this into action now. Example, create an equivalent ratio. And remember, an equivalent ratio is a ratio in which there's a positive number that multiplies both quantities in the first ratio uh, to equal the corresponding quantities in the second ratio. So we're going to pick any positive number right now for the following ratio for that ratio right there, 5 to 3. All right, so I'm going to multiply both quantities in the first ratio by the positive number. Let me make that number 2 times 2 times 2. And it will give me the corresponding quantities in the second ratio. What's 5 times 2? 10. And what's 3 times 2? 15. I just created an equivalent ratio. Why is it equivalent? Because there is a positive number that can be multiplied by both quantities in the first ratio to equal the corresponding quantities in the second ratio. What was that positive number in this case? 2. 5 times 2? 10. Next corresponding quantity, 3 times 2, 15. So let me put this in terms that you can see clearly with these letters up here. Let's say this is A, and that's B, and that's C. This is our, this is our term, and that's C, and that's D. So I'm using letters to represent a general case here. For example, if A times C equals what? If A times C equals, if A times 
lower C equals C, capital C, and B times lower C, B times lower C equals D, then I have equivalent ratios. Okay? So, for example, I could multiply this by 8. Multiply the first quantity by 8 and the second quantity by 8 in the first ratio. 5 times 8 would be 40. And then 3 times 8 would be 24. So I've created another equivalent ratio here. Why, is the, why are they equivalent? Why is 5, 5 to 3 equivalent to 40 to 24? Because I'm multiplying both quantities in one ratio by that positive number to get the corresponding quantities in the second ratio. That's why they're equivalent. Remember that that number you multiply, that positive number, has to be the same number, has to be constant. That's why there's a lowercase c here. All right, let's go to some examples and see how we can prove this and see how, how we can uh, put this in action so we can begin to understand it more clearly. All right, it says, are the following ratios equivalent? Pause for one second. Are the following ratios equivalent? Remember, when you see equivalent, you're thinking, is there, an, is there a positive number that can multiply both quantities of the first ratio to correspond to the, to equal the corresponding um, quantities in the second ratio? So again, corresponding quantities, first number in the ratio to this first number in the other ratio, and first, second number in the f first ratio to second number in the second ratio. There has to be the same number. So 7 times what gives me 35? 7 times 5 gives me 35. And 8 times what gives me 40? 8 times 5 gives me 40. Is the value, is that positive number the same in both of them? Yes. So, yes, these are equivalent. The value C is 5. And that C just represents constant. What is constantly multiplying both quantities of the first ratio to equal corresponding quantities in the second ratio? Let's go to the next problem. Are the following ratios equivalent? Is there a, a positive number that can multiply both quantities of the first ratio to get equal corresponding values in the second ratio? Let's check. So again, let's match up our corresponding quantities. First to first and second to second. Here we go. 5 times what gives me 30? Or, and 5 times 6 gives me 30. 3 times what gives me 21? 3 times 7 gives me 21. Let's look at what that positive number is in both of them. Are they the same positive number or are they different positive numbers? They are different. So, to answer this question, are the following ratios equivalent? No, they are not equivalent. Why? Because there is no value C that multiplies both quantities of the first ratio to give you corresponding values of the second ratio. In order for me to create an equivalent ratio, now, I would have to multiply both quantities by the same number. Well, it says if they're not equivalent, create an equivalent ratio. Well, I'm going to decide to take my first ratio, 5 to 3, and multiply that by the same positive number. Let's take multiply by 6 and multiply by 6. And when I do this to both quantities, when I multiply both quantities by the, same, by the same positive number, I will create an equivalent ratio. 5 times 6, 30. And 6 times, sorry, 3 times 6, 18. And this, 30 to 18, would be an equivalent ratio. Why? Because I took both quantities in the first ratio and multiplied it by a positive number, to give me corresponding numbers in the second, corresponding quantities in the second ratio. I hope that you've now learned how to create equivalent ratios. You have to multiply both quantities of one ratio 
by the same positive number. Hope you enjoyed and take care.